The Chase Inc. Business Unlimited is one of Chase's more popular business credit cards. Recently, I just got approved for this credit card, but my experience wasn't as straightforward as it should have been. In this video, I will explain exactly what went wrong and how I was able to still save myself and get approved for this credit card. That way, when you guys apply for this card, hopefully you will have a much easier time than I did. And this video couldn't have come at a more perfect time, if I do say so myself, because Chase is currently running limited time offers on some of their business credit cards. On both of the no annual fee Inc. business cards, you could earn $900 cash back after spending $6,000 in the first three months. That is 90,000 Chase points, which on the low end is worth $900, but on the high end, it's at least worth $1,800. The usual sign up bonus on these cards is $750 cash back after spending $7,500 dollars in the first three months. Not only are you getting $150 to $300 more value with the new offer, but you also have to spend $1,500 less to hit the minimum spend requirement. With that being said, that's why it's a perfect time to apply for these credit cards, especially if they've been on your radar for some time or if you're on the fence about it. And if you'd like to support my channel and learn more about these cards, you can check them out in the links down below. But don't look yet because I still need to help you get this credit card. Usually the major obstacle that a lot of people ask about is how do you get a business card without owning a business. Let's clear that up right now. To qualify for a business credit card, it's a lot easier than you think. You just need to be making money independently. There are an almost endless amount of options for you to do this, but here are a handful of great examples. Driving for Uber, Lyft, DoorDash, Grubhub, and so on. Selling things on eBay or Facebook Marketplace or Craigslist. Walking dogs, mowing lawns, tutoring, freelance work, and more. If you are still stumped on what exactly will qualify for your specific situation, go ahead and Google different side hustles that you could do. Yes, it's a bit of work up front, but once you figure it out, you can use the same business to apply for any other business credit card. Just remember, you don't have to have a registered LLC or corporation in order to apply for a business credit card. If you want more detailed information on how to increase your approval odds for a business card without a business, I recommend checking out this video up here. But this now brings up a good time to show you exactly what to put on your business credit card application, especially for the Chase Inc. Business Unlimited. Yes, a business credit card application is different from a personal credit card application, so let me show you exactly how to fill one out right now. If you already have a Chase account, that's great. Just make sure to sign in before you start the application. If you don't have a Chase account, that's also okay. You just have to fill out more fields about your personal information. Here is what the Inc. Business Unlimited credit card application looks like if you apply as a guest, aka if you don't already have a Chase account. The only thing really different is you just have this personal info section that you have to fill out here. Whereas if you're signed in with your Chase account, they will already have this information. I'm going to skip this section because it's just filling out basic info such as your name, address, income, and etc. But as you scroll down, you have the business info section where you need to pay close attention to what you are entering. For the legal business structure, most of you will select sole proprietor. This goes for all you resellers, tutors, Uber drivers, freelancers, and so on. If you don't actually have a business or business name, you will be a sole proprietor and your name will be the business name. But of course, if you do have an LLC or corporation, and so on, select that instead. Then go ahead and enter the business legal name and business name that you want printed on your actual credit card. Like I mentioned earlier, if you selected sole proprietor, usually you would just enter your name here again. Does your business use another name like a trade name, assumed name, or DBA? Probably not, so select no. Again, if you selected sole proprietor, you will then select social security number and enter your personal social security number right here. This is important because if you don't have a business credit card right now, you don't have business credit. Therefore, Chase will be checking your personal credit score. And if your personal credit score isn't at least 700, then just stop filling out the application because you want to focus on increasing your credit first. The next section is pretty straightforward, and then we arrive at 
at the final steps of the Inc. Business Unlimited application where things get serious. Here is where you put your business established date, estimated revenue, business category, and estimated monthly spend for your business. Sometimes you won't find the exact business type that pertains to you on this list, and that's okay. For me, I just Googled which NAICS code I should have for my specific business, and you could do the same as well. After filling this section out, all that's left to do is hit submit and sign your life away to the devil, but also make sure to hit the subscribe button while your application processes. Hopefully, you will get an instant approval, but unfortunately, I was originally denied. I didn't even get the hold on, we need to look into this further message. I received the straight up, we don't want you. Of course, it never feels good to be denied, especially since I talk about credit cards so much, but how did I end up still getting this card? The very next day, I called the business reconsideration line and here is their phone number. Turns out, the reason for denial was because I had too many other inquiries and honestly, I was not surprised because I was over the Chase 524 rule. That's right, I was over the Chase 524 rule. Well, maybe I wasn't technically over, but you see, I just got the Amex Expire card at the end of September, which officially put me over the 524 rule, or so I thought. When Chase announced the elevated offer on their Inc. business credit cards, I knew I had to get one. Therefore, I rushed to Credit Karma to check if my Amex Expire card had been reported onto my credit report. Because if it did show up, then I for sure would not be able to get a Chase card since that's my fifth card in the past two years. But to my surprise, I couldn't find it on that credit report. So to be extra sure, I checked my credit report with Experian and still no Amex Aspire card to be found. Since I couldn't find it anywhere, I knew I had a chance and that's why I decided to take a calculated risk and apply for the Inc. Business Unlimited. Anyway, I spent almost an hour on the recon line, but for most of it, I was placed on hold. The only real question that she asked me was what do I do for my business? Of course, I told the truth and what I put on my application, which was to make videos on the internet talking about credit cards. Then after waiting on hold for a little while longer, she applied approved me. All in all, it was a pretty easy process, but here's what I think helped me get approved and can help you get approved as well. First off, since the Amex Aspire card did not show up on my credit reports, I don't think it counted towards the 524 rule just yet. The reason being is that it's a new credit card and just wasn't reported to any credit bureau yet. I'm sure if I applied for a Chase card a few months from now or even right now, I would have gotten denied. Another tip that may help is that I have a few other Chase credit cards. I actually have four personal Chase cards to be exact. The Chase Sapphire Preferred, Chase Freedom Flex, Freedom Unlimited, and Amazon Prime Card. But the most important tip, especially if you don't have any other business credit card yet, is to make sure you have a solid personal credit score. My credit score at the time was around the 750 mark and I have had no late or missed payments ever. I know it sucks that so many important things rely on a silly credit score, but for now, we just got to play the game and I recommend doing everything you can to get your credit score in at least the 700 range. Another little tip is to be nice when you're talking on the reconsideration line. I mean, in reality, you should try to be nice all the time, no matter who you're talking to, but it probably helps when you need to overturn a denial for a credit card application. The big question is, was this all worth it? The Chase Inc. Business Unlimited is a no annual fee credit card, and since it's a business card, it won't take up a slot in the Chase 520. 24 rule. Therefore, I really don't have anything to lose from applying for this card except for maybe a hard inquiry on my credit. But more importantly, I have so much to gain from being approved, like the all-time high 90,000 Chase Point sign-up bonus and the unlimited 1.5% cash back. Now I have to get back to trying to hit that minimum spend requirement because $6,000 is still a lot of money. And while I do that, you could find the details on how to increase your approval odds for any business credit card application here. Other than that, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Shoots.